Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be Lord. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody give the Lord some praise this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it with me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Say it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That means I surrender it all. I give it to you today, Lord. Everything that I have, everything that I am, everything I ever hope to be, God, it is in you. Amen. Enter into this service today with that attitude. Not, I got to get it right before I show up. Because if you try that, you'll die trying. You'll never make it. Amen. Welcome to the ark today. Welcome everyone, everyone that's online. Amen. God is good. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Sister Charity. Shabbat Shalom. The peace of the Lord. Amen. Be with you today. Hallelujah. Did you know the ark and the and the tabernacle plan was the epicenter of the representation of the power of God. It wasn't the power of God, but the ark represented the power and presence of God in the tabernacle plan. Amen. Today, today, it's up to you how close you are to Him. Back then, you had to show up at the tabernacle. Amen. And not everybody got a chance to go in. Amen. But today, I can come boldly before the throne of grace and I can show up before Him. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what we are doing today. Hallelujah. I want to just be close to Him. I want to be close to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's love the Lord today. Let's worship Him. Amen. Going back into a little bit of an older song today. Hallelujah. Sing it with us. Hallelujah. Just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is, is my, my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be. my plea 
daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it be. Is my plea daily walking close to thee? Let it be, oh dear Lord, let, let it, it be. be. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Worthy, O Lord. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. Daily bread. This, this is, is my daily, daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very Before you, and I, I am lost, lost without, without you. you. Sing that again, and I, 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 I'm desperate before you. Hallelujah. 
This is my daily bread. Your very words spoke to me, and I, I'm desperate for you. playing this song and I want everyone to worship as if it's their last hallelujah, time hallelujah, because truly you, we Jesus. never know don't wait for the perfect song don't wait for the perfect voice it's not going to happen hallelujah This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. Are you desperate? Hallelujah. And I, I'm desperate for you. Hallelujah. And I, I'm lost without you. And I, I I'm desperate for you. And I, I'm desperate for you. And I, I, I'm lost without you. And I. for you. 
I'm desperate for you Come on, let's lift up our hands. What a beautiful presence of God. Very beautiful. You know, I love that song. I'm not going to take too much time, but I love that song. If you really think about it, how lost are you without Him? You know, I know exactly where I would be if it wasn't for God. I would be right now in a prison cell. I can almost bet my life on it. Where I was going, where I was being led, not by God, but my own worldly desires, the things of the flesh. I would have been in a prison cell. But thank God for one night that changed my life forever. God did more of with my life in 24 hours than I did in 23 years. I owe Him everything. Everything. He is worthy to be praised, greatly to be exalted. He is worthy of it all. Anything that I could give, He deserves it. And I know I fall short, but you know what great is? That He gives us every day. Let me tell you, if you've got breath in your lungs today, you have another, today, another day to live better than you did yesterday. Hallelujah. 
You have another opportunity to worship Him better than you did yesterday. You have an opportunity to read the Word if you didn't read it yesterday. We owe Him everything. And you know, sometimes the things of the world, you know, they bug us. And the things that are distraction, we are in a gener generation of distraction. God, the, the devil is trying everything he can right now to distract every single one of us. Technology is one of the biggest distractions. We think it's the greatest thing ever. But it also can become a stronghold. Because how many times have we sat there, and I'm guilty of this, and I'll be watching TV. All of a sudden, it's a marathon of my favorite show. And I get so distracted, and time seems to fly by. And by the time I get done watching, it's 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't do anything. I didn't pray. I didn't read. I didn't spend that time. I spent eight hours watching a show when I could have spent eight hours walking with him. You know your walk, your daily walk, your entire day can be a day of prayer. Did you know that? Talk with him throughout the day. I do it at work. I love talking with him at work because he shows me stuff. I'm going to share this and I'm going to stop. We're going to go into prayer. But I want you to understand, don't ever take something in the natural and think it has nothing to do with the things of the spiritual. Because God likes to use the natural to show the spiritual. And I'm going to share this. I was at work and I showed my wife this picture. And I have the picture and I'll share it today on Facebook since we're all talking about distractions. Um, I'll share it. And I literally took a picture of this. I was standing outside, and I was, I was just walking, and I was outside in the outside garden of our department, and the sun was shining. It was the first, shine, like this, the first day from winter where it was actually bright outside. And I looked down, and I kid you not, I was in armor. Every piece, you could see the outline. And I'll share this so you can understand it. But don't let, and I was having a rough day that day. But God showed me through a shadow that I have armor on. Don't take the things for granted of the natural. God's trying to speak with us, show us things in the natural that he's trying to relay us into the spiritual. But all you got to do is keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open and be on the lookout for the things of God trying to speak to you. Because I needed that reminder that I have armor on. The devil can't pierce what God's put on me. Because it's stronger than the attacks of the enemy. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Who believes God answers prayers? Amen. Who believes he goes exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think? Yes. When I prayed to be saved tw almost 10 years ago, I prayed for something simple. Lord, just take me to a different place. I never thought that place would be behind a pulpit. But God does above what we could ever think. Would I ever think that I would be up here talking to one of the best congregations? We may be small, but we're loud. Amen. I believe we're unified. And I believe there's coming a time when we'll be even more unified. We are in a season of the spring feast. And you know what's coming up, right? Pentecost. We better be unified <laughs> coming into that time. Come on. One mind, one accord. You know, all, the only thing we got to believe on in, in unity is that He reigns and everything is under His feet. If you can believe that, we're unified. Don't let anything else, no false doctrines, no other gospel sneak in. He is the God, Christ crucified on the cross. In the grave three days, He is risen and is forevermore, which was, which is, and is to come. He is surely coming back. And I look forward to that time. Because... <laughs> Because we'll actually get to thank Him in person. Hmm. So are there any needs of the house? Let's just raise our hands. You know what the Lord knows? On the cross. Did you know on the cross 
Even before you were born, He knew everything that you were going to ask. So just raise your hand. The Lord knows. Raise your hand in faith. Say, Lord, I believe that on the cross you said it was finished. The work is done. That means every sickness that you have, every disease, every stronghold in your mind, because that's what the enemy likes to attack, the mind. Those things cannot stand before the Almighty God who was crucified and is forevermore. So let's go before the Lord, boldly before the throne of grace. You have that. You are a high priest. He has given you that position that you can go boldly before Him. You can enter that holy of holies. You just got to believe. Father, Lord, thank you so much today for breathing in me life. Lord, not every day is promised, but I will not take this day for granted, Father. I will worship you. I will praise you, Lord. I will magnify you with the breath that you have given. And Father, I pray right now for every need in the house as a high priest, Father. I bear the infirmities of my brothers and sisters. And I pray, Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, as it is in heaven, let it also be done in the earth. And I pray every sickness will be gone, every disease, every form of high blood pressure, Lord. Anything that has a name must bow before the name of the Almighty God. Uh, Anxiety must leave in the mighty name of the Almighty God. And I thank you, Jesus. And I pray during this time, Lord, these spring feasts, Lord, that we would come under a greater oneness, Lord, a greater unity, Father, and that we will experience you in this spring in a new way. Lord, I don't want to experience you in the same way I experienced you yesterday. But Lord, I want to keep growing. I want us to keep growing, Father. That we experience you every day in a new way. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for every person here, every person on live stream, Father, who tunes in, who is faithful to the things of the house of God. And I pray a special blessing on everybody, Lord, in this place, everybody on live stream. Lord, you are worthy of my praise. Be with those who aren't here. Sister Willis, be with the McClay family. Be with all those in need, Lord. You know every person who's not here. We thank you, Jesus. Bless them, Father. Hallelujah. And we thank you, as always, Lord, for inhabiting the praise of your people. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for worshiping. What a beautiful presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, I'm going to turn it off, uh, turn myself off, and Sister King will come up here. But God bless you. Thank you for worshiping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. <clears throat> Such a beautiful presence, as was mentioned. Hallelujah. And it's not about the songs. It's not about the people who sing the songs. It's about what's in our heart that comes out, and he meets us here right? Amen. So I would like the ushers to go ahead and come up here for tithe and offering, and I did want to make mention, many of you have already given for the, it's not the Passover one, it's actually the Feast of Unleavened Bread offering in Deuteronomy 16, 16 through 17. There's another one coming up at Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, and then Tabernacles. It's three times a year that the male, the head male of the family is supposed to come forward with some sort of offering. Um, if you, if your husband doesn't attend here, if you are not married, then that falls upon you, um, as the spouse that's in the church. So I just wanted to remind everybody, if you'd like to give for that and you haven't had a chance to do so, now is your time. Just indicate on your envelope or online that it is for, um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. (coughs) Um, Feast of First Fruits, I believe is what it says. Unleavened Bread of First Fruits is right around the same. So anyway, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give. Lord, we pray that you would bless those that give and those who don't, God. We pray an Abrahamic blessing upon those who are faithful unto you, God, and we thank you. We ask you to press it down, shake it together, and let it be overflowing for your glory and your kingdom. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we ask and pray, amen. Thank you. So I did want to mention the McClays are not here, but it's not because they're sick. They're out of town for their anniversary. So, um, yeah. They got rid of their kids and said, bye, see you later. No. (laughs) 
um, as y'all can tell, I'm, I don't feel terrible. My, I'm still getting over this cough. Um, so y'all just pray for me. Um, and tomorrow, as a reminder, ladies, we do have our um, monthly ladies pitch-in and discipleship class that is here at 10 o'clock at the church tomorrow. So please bring something and come and learn from Sister Bobby. She's always got good information, although you have to be quiet because you have to listen for her. <laughs> I did want to mention on the donating for the youth fundraiser, we have a couple more weeks. We have this weekend, next weekend, <coughs> and then the following weekend is the first weekend in May, and that is when the actual pie in the face will take place. Excuse me. So, if you'd like to get your money in, it, there is an updated information paper back there with how much everybody's at as far as current standings go. So feel free to add. You can even do it online if you let me know um, or whomever will put it in that bucket. Actually makes it a lot easier than having to count coins. <laughs> so <clears throat> just an FYI, an update on that. Um, this past Tuesday was the ladies' tea. I have heard that it went very well at Sister Hazel's. Um, I imagine she's not here because she doesn't always feel the best. So let's keep her in prayer too. Um, the next one, it, it, let me just say for the ladies Bible study that has been on Tuesdays, it is going to now be on certain Mondays, okay? No further Tuesdays. That seemed to help with some of the ladies that could not be here on Tuesdays. So the next one is, <coughs> excuse me, May 8th. Is that right, Sister Amy? May 8th. And I think the one after that will be May 29th, which is not exactly two, 22nd. Okay. So it is every other week in May so far. So May 8th is going to be the next one. Still a little bit away, but I just wanted to make mention it will no longer be on Tuesdays. This is a permanent change. Um, and of course, we have our ladies' tea coming up May 7th. So if you'd like to donate any floppy hats or anything, I don't know how much you've gotten, um, or get with Sister Amy on details on that. Oh, there's Sister Hazel right here. <laughs> um, praise God. Um, but Sister Amy had mentioned something about a photo booth, I believe. So anything that could be used for that, if you'd like to get in touch with her, please do so. Um, and of course, there will be different things going on there. There's finger foods, but it is a pitch-in for the ladies' tea for the finger foods, okay? I just want to make mention of that as well. Um, and then April 29th, which is next Saturday, so a week from today, <coughs> there's going to be a youth movie night here at 6 p.m. Popcorn is provided, but youth, you have to provide sneaks, sneaks, <laughs> so snacks and drinks together, snacks and drinks, <laughs> sneaks, <laughs> making up words up here. Um, snacks and drinks, you have to pitch in if you want them, okay? If you don't bring anything, don't expect any, anybody else to bring anything on that. But I'm sure it'll be a fun time. The McClays will be back, obviously, by then. They're not going far, but <clears throat> I just wanted to make mention for the parents that may have forgotten about that. Um, and also, guys, Mother's Day is coming up in like three weeks, what, three or four weeks, something like that. So we're going to have a special service, of course, like we usually do. We're going to have <coughs> giveaways for any moms <coughs> like we've done in years past. So invite, invite, not just for Mother's Day, but for services in general. And um, also, Sister Bobby, empty cans. She's trying to get this done by a certain time frame. Not the vegetable, regular size vegetable cans. It's a little too small. She needs empty and rinsed out cans that are 18 ounces to 28 ounces. Um, if you have any questions about that, please ask her. But she does need them by this upcoming weekend. So if you have any on hand, please get with her. Um, and of course, we still always have our Monday night prayer meetings, our Wednesday night Bible studies. Um, that's still happening, 6.30 on both. Food is provided at the Wednesday night Bible study, and the church is open from 6.30 to 8 on Mondays. If you want to just come in for, pop in for 10 minutes, or if you want to stay the whole time, you can. Um, but I believe that's all that I have, so thank you all very much. Well, praise the Lord. Good to see everyone this morning. 
You know, back when I was growing up, sneaks were something that you got on your feet. Got a new pair of sneaks? Or you had to say it in such a way that it sounded cool. It was like, yeah, got some sneaks? Way back in the 1990s. It's good to be with all of you this morning. Uh, please pay attention to all of the uh, announcements, everything that's set up here. Uh, I cannot count on two hands how many times someone has come back and said, well, I didn't hear that. That wasn't talked about at church, and it was in the announcements for months and weeks. People weren't listening. Please pay attention so you know what is going on. And most, most of you do. Most of you do. And uh, I'm not even singling anyone out. But if you want to be a part of something, you've got to listen to the announcements. I know those are kind of boring. They can be redundant, but they are very important. Big things are happening, and I believe big things uh, that God has in store for us as well. But while we are waiting and watching and wanting to be a part of these big, huge things, we cannot neglect the little thing that God is doing either. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. Amen? You know, the biggest thing that God has ever done in your personal life is what He's doing on the inside of you right now. Amen? What God is doing inside of the individual ends up showing in the church, shows in the family. Those alone, those quiet times. And we are in such times right now, we are in the in-betweens. We are in between uh, one feast, one Bible festival, and we're in that period of counting and then We've just come through Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. But God does big things on the in betweens, and I'm going to uh, teach a little bit about that today. Uh, if you caught the live stream last night, I got into a little bit of this. But I do believe this is what God is doing. He's looking for someone. God is walking through the people and seeing who will look when He appears and shows Himself to them. Amen. When you think that you're walking, nothing is happening. It looks like everything is just status quo. You went from one mountain, now you're in this in-between valley, and you're looking to another mountain. But all this time in here, if we pay attention, God is speaking growth. He's speaking health. He's speaking wealth. He's speaking the provision you need. He's speaking the healing that you need, instructions that you need. It's a preparation time. Amen. That's what he's doing now. All right. We, we uh, believe the Lord has got good things in store for all of us. Amen. He does. He really does. Jesus endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. In other words, he's seen something full of joy. That's why he despised the shame. That's why he endured the cross. And that's why he went all the way through the process. You can read that in Hebrews chapter 12. Sometimes you've got to go through the process. That's where many of us are at right now. Okay, all right. So a little change today. Sister Anna just had a C-section baby, a baby through C via C-section, sorry. So she is still healing up, and she is not going to be teaching her class. Um, I believe Sister Harrison has those classes today, and the young people are going to go with uh, Sister King as well. And so here's, I'm going to do this like normal, I'm going to dismiss, I just wanted to make that uh, clear beforehand because we had to switch things up 
uh, due to circumstances and people not able to be here. So our first uh, dismissal here is the nursery one, the two-year-olds, and then following after them would be the children's class, three to seven-year-olds, and then uh, the eight to 11-year-olds. You're all with Sister Harrison. And then immediately following them, when they go through those, uh, the, that doorway, they cross that threshold, the young people, ages 12 to 18, you can be dismissed as well. It's good to see the Tuckers back, see their little angel. They got two little angels right there. They're angels. You just let them grow up. I love this family, and uh, I appreciate them. And, you know, children are the heritage of the Lord. God is adding to his heritage. Why every, every baby's precious in his sight? They're his. They are his. Don't think I have anything else to mention. Just keep us, uh, when you speak to the Lord, just say a little prayer for your pastors. And um, we'll pray for you too. If you need any ministry, um, and we need each other. So feel free to reach out to one another. Feel free to reach out to these men of God that help me and these other ladies of God in the church. We all need one another. If you can't tell, uh, my voice is still not back 100%. About two days ago, I turned a corner and I felt better than I had in over a week. So I don't know what it was or what's going on. I believe it was an attack from the enemy myself. I don't believe that uh, all sicknesses are just the will of God. And God said, here, why don't you be sick? And I love you. I don't believe that at all. Gave us power over sicknesses and diseases. And I think we got some, we had some type of a sinus infection or something. We didn't have any fever, but it was just, uh, it took our voices and just made us real tired. And uh, just two days ago, though, I turned a corner and I, I woke up one day and it was just as if all the pressure in my head was gone. I didn't have a headache anymore. I had the energy mostly back that I normally would have uh, had. I had some strength. I wasn't, um, you know, I was breathing fine. So praise the Lord for that. We are turning the corner on this. Now, y'all don't get any of this stuff because it stinks. You don't want it. But anyway, I believe God has a healing if, 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 if that's the case. Notice a lot of things can happen. And they do happen. Murphy's Law, anything that can happen will happen. But you being in a special place with God, you have a certain grace. That's why pandemics can happen and you're okay. That's why plagues can happen and you're okay. That's why you could get a deadly illness and suffer as if you have a Minor illness, because that's the world we live in. It's a corrupted world. But you can be okay. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let me get into the word. Mr. Korn, I sent you uh, another a scripture reference. I didn't use any references last night. And I just kind of talked to the people. And those watching on live stream, welcome to all those who are watching on live stream. We miss everyone who is not here today. And with the help of the Lord, I'll teach you a little bit today. And we'll talk about where we're at right now and what God is doing right now. And then maybe add a few little things in there and then we'll get you on your way. And if you need personal ministry afterwards, well, we're always available to do that. Kim, how you feeling out there? God touch you in that corner back there? Prayed for Kim before 
uh, we began today, and I really felt the Lord back in that corner with angels, and it was like something just, that switch turned on, and the atmosphere changed, and it changed inside of me too, and we prayed for her, and we believe she's going to be all right, and God does those things, even in the most, the times that you would think that it's just a normal day. How many normal days did Jesus walk into and then all of a sudden when he showed up, things changed. Dead people got up. Lame people were no longer lame. Ears got opened up. Hallelujah. Tongues got loosed. Amen. When you start talking about the Lord, you notice the change in the atmosphere? I feel it. He's always here. Let him turn your normal into his extraordinary. Amen. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. Next verse. By which also you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Now here, Paul's referring to Passover, and unleavened bread, and first fruits. And He was seen of Peter, then of the twelve, After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. At once. 500 people seen the risen Christ once. One time. Where are those 500 on the day of Pentecost? Whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep or they are in the grave. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to teach on this subject today, and you're going to understand why I chose this title when I get into this word, and if you've tuned in last night, It'll be some of the same stuff. The barley is still in the field. The barley is still in the field. So with the help of the Lord, I'm going to teach the people. I'm going to help us to understand where we are at today. We have to know where we are at right now. So Lord Jesus, maker of heaven and earth, open our eyes, open our ears, Open our understanding like you did in Luke 24 or 22 to the disciples when you opened their understanding so they could understand the scriptures. Help us to see, help us to understand, help us to know. Like Philip when he preached to the Ethiopian eunuch in the chariot from the scroll of Isaiah. He preached Jesus from the scroll. Father, we have this word, this New Testament before us. We have the Old Testament as well. And may we be well rounded and balanced and able to preach Jesus from the old and the new. Let your people hear today. Let faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The barley is still in the field. Every festival, every gathering in the Bible. If you uh, were to look in Leviticus 23, where God lays out festivals and celebrations and gives the exact details on how to celebrate them, what day they are to be celebrated on. God didn't leave any 
detail or any stone unturned and any string untied. God planned it, set it in motion, provided all of the details, provided all of the instructions, and even told the people how to do it. That's how exact your God is. So, in Leviticus 23, we're given a list of festivals that tell the story. Not only are these festivals and celebrations, and we are in the middle of them right now, that tell a story, but they are appointments with God. Do you know that one of the reasons why the Lord allowed the children of Israel to be exiled, and this is found in the book of Ezekiel, because they despised His Sabbaths. He said Sabbaths, plural. Not the weekly Sabbath only, or the Sabbath of the land where uh, crops would not be planted and harvested in the seventh year but they would receive double in the sixth, and the land could enjoy a Sabbath. But these, (coughs) pardon me, high Sabbaths, not only the weekly, not only the seven-year Sabbath, but the high Sabbaths, the ones such as Passover or Pentecost, or that's also Shavuot, trumpets, atonement in these holy days. God set these up and commanded His people through ordinances to approach Him on these times. And the time we're living in now and this in-between time, in-between festivals, is no different. The Lord is still commanding and the Lord is still compelling And the Lord is still drawing. When He said that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto Me. That wasn't something that may happen. That wasn't only something that could happen. But it's something that will and does happen. It's a promise. The Lord saw the number before Him. Before His suffering. Through the eyes of glory. The Lord saw the multitudes around the throne. Through the eyes of glory, the Lord saw those first fruit brethren and those first resurrection brethren and sisters around God's throne following the Lamb. This is why He put His shoulder to the burden and did not let up. And when the Lord laid upon Him the iniquity of us all. He didn't condemn and He didn't criticize and and He didn't put down and He didn't say, forget it, I hate them. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do because through the eyes of glory and the eyes of love He saw on the other side what was coming to be. He knew that if He were to get through this time that there is a greater glory on the other side. God has not changed in 2023. If we are able to endure and get through this time, there's a greater glory coming on the other side. After His suffering and after His burial, and the brutal beating and the torturous crucifixion. Jesus is laid in the grave and He raises on the third day. And just like the Bible is written exactly to the dotting of the I and the crossing of the T, Jesus fulfills and participates literally in another festival. One in Leviticus 23 that we celebrated. We called it the resurrection or the first fruits. And if you were here last week, you would understand that the first fruits of what was being resurrected or lifted from the earth and harvested was what was in the field at the time, which is the barley. 
You see, the wheat of Pentecost had not come yet because the barley was still in the field. And as long as the barley was in the field being harvested and we were in between those times of glory, those appointments that God had set up, the barley was continuously, constantly, every day being harvested. And the number was being added to every day until it was all gone because the barley harvest didn't end until Pentecost began. I want to remind the saints that the barley is still in the field. We are still in the in-betweens. You say, well, Pastor King, I have already experienced the wheat of Pentecost. I've already experienced the power that comes at Pentecost. But we are here celebrating another cycle and another feast season. Year after year after year after year until the Lord comes. Which tells me that God isn't done revealing Himself in different ways to different people throughout these seasons. God is not done and neither was He done when He was crucified. If He would have been crucified and left dead, our faith would not be complete. Our resurrection would not have been able to take place and you would be dead in your sins. You would be dead because though He paid for your sins, there was no resurrection and so you have to stay in the grave as well. You're not going to do, and I mentioned this last week, you are not going to do anything that the Lord has not already first done. You don't have the power nor the authority to create or do anything God has not already done or say a word that God has not already spoken. And it come to pass and happen and have uh, there be action. And so the Lord went to the grave, incorruptible, came out of the grave, incorruptible, he was a new body. He was a resurrected Savior. Because Jesus actually died. Jesus actually, the body, died. But the Scripture tells me the Lord raised Him up. And we all know if you die, if you're raised up, you're not the same as you were in your previous life. There's some scholars that say Jesus never actually died. He just went and laid down. Or it wouldn't be. That doesn't make any sense. Because something had to die in order. For our sins to be washed away. The body died. But the blood was in, and is alive. Why the blood is able to save you. That's why well, the blood didn't die. There was no corruption in it. But the Lord laid upon the body the iniquity of us all. If you or I had the iniquity of all of humanity and corrupt things laid upon you, you would not, and I would not be able to handle that and live. You wouldn't be able to handle it and live. The scripture would come true all over again. You shall surely die. I would have, uh, I would have exploded. I would have exploded with the weight of that sin and that debt. That's why debt always wears a person out. You have a physical debt, it wears you out thinking about it. It wears on your life thinking that any day now, the debtor could come a-calling, and I have to pay, and I don't have anything to pay the debt with. Debt, you can't handle debt. God never designed you to be in debt. Jesus paid the debt. Because it was never His will for you to be upside down in debt. So Jesus dies and 
goes into the grave and rises again on the third day at the first fruits. He was the first fruit. And the harvest that was taking place, because all of these festivals, there's a harvest at each one. All of them. I'm getting to my point. The harvest at every one of these. Around Passover, the barley was in the field. When Jesus was raised up, and in Leviticus 23, when the priest would raise and lift up that sheaf of first fruits, the first of the harvest that began to the day of the turning into the day of first fruits. That's when the, harley, the barley harvest began. I know some of this is, is repeat. But I, I'm, I'm laying a foundation. The priest would hold up that barley to the Lord and it would be accepted and it would be a sign of what is to come. And so in this in-between time, the Scripture tells me that if I am died dead with Christ, if I'm buried with Him through baptism into His death, I could be raised and will be raised to newness of life. Into His death. So I and you are literally participating in the same cycle, the same festival. We're of the same elements. We have the same DNA structure. We have the same makeup. This is what we're following Christ. And so Christ goes into the grave. He fulfills with His resurrection the first fruit wave offering. And then many think it ends there and then they neglect and they ignore all that in between time where Jesus showed up. From what our text reads, over 500 showed up, he showed up to. And, he, and they all saw him at one time. And then there were at least 11 other times where Jesus shows up in intimate gatherings. He shows up on a lakeside. He shows up with breakfast cooked. Imagine you, you thought that your life was now over with. The, the man and the person and who you staked everything on. This is what they did. They sold everything. They sold out to follow this Miracle worker, water walking, blind eye healer, dead raising man of their Messiah. Imagine now, he's dead, he's in the grave, they haven't seen him. There's stories that say, well, he's resurrected. Rome is looking for him, the religious Jews are looking for him. Now they're trying to make up lies and say, well, the disciples put yourself in their position, stole his body away. Now we could be hunted down. We could be the next on the list. I don't know what John was thinking. He's, I got his mother in my house. I was at the foot of the cross. I was in the high priest's house. It could be coming after me now. And Jesus shows up in Galilee when they're fishing with breakfast waiting on the beach. And then he disappears again. Imagine being the disciples and going through this process. You staked your entire existence on the existence and life of this one man. And now it looks like he's been crucified. It looks like evil won. It looks like the devil triumphed. Rome won again. He must not be the Messiah. But now all of a sudden, he's not in the grave anymore. And he's showing up when we're having our fishing trip. And he's showing up at supper. And he's disappearing again. What is God doing? God's not doing anything different in this in-between time than He did back at Passover. And God's not doing anything different than He did when He went into the grave at unleavened bread. And God's not doing anything different, people of the Lord, in 2023 than what He's done at every trumpet and every tabernacle celebration 
Every day of atonement, God is showing up and desiring to have an appointment with His people. The question is, will you be like the 500 or will you be like the 120? Will you be like the 500 that saw them all at one time? And wow, this is the risen Christ. Look, He rose from the dead. I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime. We've only read about this in the miracles of the prophets and the miraculous deliverance of the children of Israel and everything God did through Moses and everything God did through Joshua and everything God did through Elijah and Elisha and in King David. And how he filled the tabernacle and the temple with his cloud when it was dedicated to the Lord under Solomon. We haven't seen anything like this and now he's walking. Now he's showing up. There's 500 that are seeing the risen Lord. He's showing up at dinner gatherings and he's showing up at fishing trips and he's showing up at places like the graveyard where they laid his body. A memorial to dead things. That's what a graveyard is. It's a memorial to dead things. We honor the memory and we reverence the life that was lived so we create a memorial to people who don't no longer live in this flesh. Jesus shows up when Mary's in the garden. She didn't even recognize him. She thought he was the gardener. And then he speaks to her and she says, Rabboni. Mary, why don't you go and tell my brethren, God is showing up in the places in this season you thought were dead and gone. Things that you thought were, there's no life there. The Lord doesn't dwell there anymore. He's walked on. He's forgotten me. He's left me to deal with the Romans. And He's left me to deal with my enemies. And He's left me to myself. And then God shows up where you thought everything was dead and hopeless. And says, you go tell my brethren I live. God's not doing anything different now than He has already done. And in this time. While we are in the in-betweens, while we are going from point A, B, C, and now we're in all the letters in the middle, and we're going to end up at P, Pentecost. God has not changed His way. God is still showing up in meetings. God is still healing girls and women in corners. God is still touching teeth, and God is still touching nerves and Ligaments. God is still healing livers. God is still healing blood pressure. God is still healing kidneys. He's still showing up where you thought He was gone. God's still healing marriages. God's still healing families. God's still healing emotions. And He's appearing to those who He wants to have an appointment with. Just because we ain't at the wheat harvest of Pentecost doesn't mean God's still not harvesting the barley. As long as we're in this season, the barley is still in the field and God is still showing up in life. You know... It's not like you go looking for Him in these situations. Remember the words of Peter. Well, put it in this everyday postmodern era attitude. I'm going fishing. I don't know about y'all. Looks like everything's run to crap. Let's be human here. Not act so pious and righteous that we we don't we're not real. Looks like everything has just went to pot. I'm going fishing, and I hope I'm gonna catch some dinner. Maybe I'll get into a nice walleye. 
I might even tell you what I use for bait. When I brag about it by the campfire. And Jesus shows up and disrupts the whole fishing trip. And they caught nothing! <laughs> and he asks the question. Like he's, he's God Almighty anyway. He asks the question, children, do you have any meat? I heard you, Peter. I heard you say, I'm going fishing. I'm going to do what I want to do, the way I want to do it, how I want to do it, and you ain't going to stop me because this is what I'm going to do. And he catches nothing. I do understand something about catching nothing. I'm not one of those highfalutin, high-profile, professional fishermen that can just go and catch anything because they throw a line in the water and somehow the fish says, yeah, I'll get in your, I'll, I'll come up there and, you know, they have this conversation and I can't do that. I can catch fish, but I understand when you catch nothing. Jesus shows up and says, children, do you have any meat? Sit down for breakfast. Let's have a conversation. Peter, I made you a fisher of men. And now in this in-between time, let's just be real. Let's, let's, just, let's apply this as you are a human being. And you're just a normal person, Peter. I made you a fisher of men, Peter. You wanted to go back to what you were doing because in this in-between time, when you thought all was hopeless, when everything changed, and you're in the middle from one mountain to another mountain, that's the process. You are on one mountain. Jesus was crucified outside the city. The battle took place on the Mount of Olives. Crushing place. Then he was crucified right outside one of the walls of Jerusalem on one of the peaks. Jerusalem's up on a mountain, by the way. Now they're in a dark valley. An in-between time. But everything is continuing on as it should. The barley's still in the field. There's still a harvest going on. And Jesus is going throughout the earth. After he's been resurrected, the known world, he's going throughout at least Israel and appearing 12 times to 500, to 2, to 12, to 2 walking on a road to Emmaus. And we're going from one mountain to another. The Mount of Olives one of the peaks of Jerusalem, through the valley, all the way, we're going up to Mount Zion. This is where Pentecost was poured out. And then this whole time, there's a harvest going on. And little did, and the 500, they didn't understand it, because obviously they didn't stick around long enough to hear his instructions. To go and tarry in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. What you see now is not what will be. It is not all that shall be or will be. You're in the in-betweens. But that whole time you're in the in-betweens. The barley's still being harvested every day, little by little, little by little, and being raised up and showed to God. Now we, we, we preached and we taught about the barley harvest. In the last few weeks, it's the first fruit, the first crop. Jesus was part of the barley harvest. The unleavened bread of Passover, you guessed it, barley bread. Because the wheat wasn't ready yet. They had to have used barley. And so while you are on the in-betweens and God is looking for people, this is why I told the saints, 
uh, earlier in this worship celebration. God is looking for you. God is showing up, trying to make appointments with you. Showing up at your gatherings, your suppers, and your fishing trips, and your journeys going to Emmaus. Just two people walking down a road and the Lord shows up in their midst. It didn't happen at Pentecost. You saw what happened at Pentecost. It wasn't at Passover. It was in this in-between time. It was in the in-between time where God was gathering a first fruit resurrection, a first fruit portion, and a first fruit barley harvest. Seeing who would hold on to His Word and hold on to His truth. Who would go with Him all of the way. You know, victory and Miraculous provision. Now why did Peter say he was going fishing? Well, it wasn't only because he was going back to what he thought he knew how to do. He was going back to where his provision was. The Lord had been crucified, killed, put in the grave, and now... Peter wasn't even sure if he had a ministry anymore. He's going back to where his provision is. I want to bring out a few passages and then I will close. And I'll make this statement to preface this, what I'm going to say. Victory and provision are always tied to a first fruit. Victory and provision are always tied to a first fruit. I'm going to show you why. John chapter 6 and verse 8. One of the accounts of Jesus feeding multitude. The scripture will show you and tell you. Did I write that down correctly? Let's go to the next verse. We're talking about five loaves and two fishes. I'm going to pull it up on my little device. John chapter 6. Verse 9. Verse 9. There we go. There's a lad here. Which has five, what does he have? Barley loaves and two small fishes. Now, barley was a very common grain. Actually, uh, a lot of it was used for animal feed. But barley was what was being harvested in the time that we are in now. Barley was represented, or barley represented the risen Christ. He was the sheaf or the the, uh, omer that was lifted up to the Lord by the priest to be accepted by God on the day of first fruits. It was the barley harvest. Barley represents this first fruit harvest. It's common, not really highly desired, but it's plentiful. Everyone can eat it. The animals can eat it. And Jesus made sure it represented him. He was of no reputation. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Not many mighty, not many noble, not many powerful are called. But God has chosen the base things. What are the base things? It's the grain. It's the barley. I don't need to get into the characteristics of barley, uh, such as I did a few weeks back. But what do you have here? You have five loaves, five barley loaves and two small fishes. And God used that to bring miraculous provision to people who desire to follow Him. 
Provision and victory and miracles are always going to be tied to first fruits. In fact, the first fruit was only the first portion of the entire victory and the entire miraculous provision. It's no coincidence that it's barley loaves. Didn't say wheat bread. That's at Pentecost. It's the barley. God uses things that don't seem that desirable to us to give us profound truths and views of His glory. Now, jump over to Judges chapter 6. An angel appears to verses 11 through 12. An angel appears to Gideon. Now, I want you to understand something. If you if you've know the story of Gideon... You've read this. Israel was worshiping Baal. It's no wonder they were impoverished. It's no wonder that their half-brothers were showing up and taking away their provision and their blessing from God. These these people were Israel's half-brothers. These people were descendants of of Abram's and Abraham's other kids through other women. Israel was a descendant through Abram's kid Isaac through Sarah. So these are brothers that are fighting and these are half-brothers showing up and causing issues and trying to take the firstborn and the blessing. God gave the firstborn blessing to Isaac. He gave all of his provision to Isaac. And so that's why you see hundreds of years later what's happening. They want to come and take it. And so the scripture shows us, you can read this. Israel was impoverished every time they had a harvest, every time they had a fruit, every time there were sheep in the field or goats. Their half-brothers would show up and steal what they had. They'd steal from them. Take them away. Not allow them to enjoy the provision and the blessing of God. You cannot enjoy the things of God if you're worshiping idols. You will not experience the joys of the Lord if you are bowing down to a deity that is not God. Will not happen. You can't be a happy sinner if you've been saved. Ain't going to happen. They're an agricultural nation. They lived off of what they grew. They lived off of what was produced in their flocks and, and their herds an agricultural society and so now it's under threat and it's under it's under attack and everything they are being blessed with everything that's grown everything that comes out of the womb is being taken by people who had some blessing now look Abram did not send his other kids away without anything he gave them their own land Gave him a portion, but the rest of it he gave to Isaac. Isaac was the main portion receiving son. He was the he got the first of everything. And so now Israel gets into idolatry. And guess who shows up wanting the rest? Half half brothers. Family. It's a family affair. And a man's enemies will be they of his own household. This wasn't Isaac's household. This wasn't Israel's household. But they were of the same bloodline. And so what, what is happening? Gideon, 
this mighty man of valor. Read the beginning of the story. He's threshing wheat by a wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. You know what harvest it is. We've had Pentecost, or at least we've had a wheat harvest. That's Pentecost. And he's threshing wheat, so you know what time of the season it is. Now, we're in the in-betweens. We are not yet to Pentecost. We are counting down the days. We're still in the barley harvest. And it's going to make sense here in just a minute. Now, jump over to chapter 7. Remember, I said God brings provision through the thing that's attached and victory through the thing that is represented by the first fruits. They are celebrating the wheat harvest in chapter 6, or they're trying to, and they're in slavery to the nations around them. They're half-brothers. They're impoverished. You read on, they made dens in the mountains to hide in because those people would come and fill the whole land like a swarm of locusts. So now here we are, we're fast forwarding through the story. Go to chapter 7. Remember he's threshing wheat by a wine press. The wine press doesn't represent Pentecost or that season. The wine press is, is in tabernacles. Grapes are ready at tabernacles. Here he's threshing wheat. In a wine press. You see the confusion that happens? You can't even get the harvest right if the heart's not right. You'll try to get what what comes from a grape out of wheat. And then your clock will be messed up and your mind will be messed up. And you'll wonder why God's not showing up with victory and provision. Anytime God brings great victory and great provision, it will always be attached to something that's a first fruit holy thing to him. God says, return to your first love. The first part of your first fruits of love, me. Judges 7. Then Jerubbabel, who is... Gideon and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod so that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Mor in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands lest Israel should vaunt themselves against me saying my own hand has saved me. Now, God is whittling down Gideon's ability to fight on his own terms. I'm going to get to the exact scripture. So what happens is Gideon goes down and checks out the enemy and wants to see where the enemy's at. And after this trying and after this Weeding out and God reducing his army down to 300 men. Verse 9, jump to verse 9. It came to pass the same night. The Lord said unto him, Arise, get you down to the host, for I have delivered it into your hand. But if you fear to go down, go with Pura thy servant down to the host. Next verse. You're going to to like this. And you will hear what they'll say. And afterward, your hands will be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. He went to the outer perimeter of, the, of these uh, conquering marauders, these, this army. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like a grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number, and the sand by the seaside for multitude. 
And just for uh, historical context, the Amalekites were descendants of Esau. Like I said, half-brothers. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, watch this. We're in the wheat harvest, right? But a cake of barley bread tumbles into the host of Midian and came into a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay all along. And the next verse says that one guy says to another guy, this is the sword of Gideon. For into his hand has God delivered Midian and all the host. And then if you read on and you know the story, God delivered Israel and made them the conquerors of those who had enslaved them. They started tearing down their idols. Gideon tore down the idol in this, before this part of the story, in his father's house. <coughs> and then the people were into such idolatry. This is before this, this account right here. They wanted to kill Gideon because he tore down the idol of Baal in his dad's house. This is how, this is how confused a person becomes when they start serving other gods. And so God gives them a great victory. But what is this victory represented by? It's represented not by a, a flying loaf of bread, of wheat. It's a barley cake. It's something common. Get in. You aren't a mighty man, according to the world's standards. But God called him a man of valor. But he represented Gideon with a cake of barley. Well, that was a previous harvest. That was another season. That's what Jesus represented himself with, was barley. That's what was fed to one of the accounts of the 5,000 being fed, was barley loaves. Victory and provision are always attached to first fruits, and the barley harvest is in the first fruit harvest. And when God gives the people great victory, He looks to the things that have always been. It looks like a new thing to us. But God chooses what's always been. God chooses something that's set aside holy to Him, represented with a first fruit harvest. Your victory, your provision was always attached to something set aside for God. And if you're in the place, you're in that in-between place, you're looking for the vision to go forward. You're looking for the provision that you can feed off of and you can live from. You're looking for the grace that is to come. And you know, you know, Pentecost is on the way. Pentecost is on the way. But the victory that you're looking for is going to be found in the first fruit harvest. The provision you're looking for is going to be attached to the first fruit harvest. The provision, the victory, the joy, what you're looking for is always attached to the first. The barley is still being harvested. The barley is still in the field and God is still moving about like He did after His resurrection throughout the earth, throughout towns and cities looking for somebody who He can have an appointment with. They lost their hope. But their hope showed up in the in-betweens. And showed them that God wasn't finished yet. God wasn't done yet. Mary, you go tell my brethren, I go before them to Galilee. And when they get there, they want to go fishing, but they're going to show up on a beach and there's going to be breakfast waiting. Mary, you're looking for me in the place where they laid my dead body. I'm no longer here. I'm alive, but I came just to meet you. 
at your hour of need where you're at right now to strengthen your faith. All this time, God's looking for barley in the field. He's looking for barley in the field. And the question is, are you part of it? Am I part of it? We all love the wheat of Pentecost. But if we don't understand the significance of the barley, we'll be trying to get from wheat what you can only get from grapes in a wine press. That was a profound statement. If you don't understand victory and provision and grace come from the first part. That's why it's the first part. Because it represents the next part. And if you don't have a first, you don't have a next. Or a second. God is looking for somebody he can have an appointment with, who he can show up and talk to them when they're having supper, and talk to them fishing, and talk to them when they're driving down the road. Is that person you? And is that person me? The question begs to be answered. In Jesus' name. Don't quit looking and don't lose hope when you're in the in-between, when you're in that journey, that valley from one mountain to another. One festival to another because there's appointments and divine meetings and happenings and divine encounters that are waiting on the in-between. Are you going to be like the 120 who stuck with him all the way, who found themselves on a mountain waiting for the promise, or the 500 that had to come later, or some of the 500 who weren't even around because they missed it? They forgot that the Word of God is true and the barley is still being harvested and God is still working and God is still speaking and God is still moving. God is still looking for somebody who he can show himself to. This is a time of appointments and divine encounters. Jesus wants to show up in your life today. He wants to show up in your life today. In Jesus' name. Everybody can stand. Lift up your hands. Father... Go forth out of this place. And we are in the process of going from one mountain through a valley, counting the days up to the next. Lord, meet us on our way. Meet us when we travel. Meet us in our everyday lives. Meet us in our homes. And Father, may we be found in that harvest of barley because that's the one You chose to represent. If we want to be like You, we've got to be in the barley harvest, God! We have to have the same DNA. We have to have the same purpose. We have to have the same likeness. We have to. We have to be able to suffer with you. We have to be able to receive the mysteries of the kingdom of God openly. And not just in parables. Do it, Lord, in our lives. Do it, Lord. Give us divine encounters. Give us divine instances and meetings and instantaneous, miraculous happenings in the Spirit. And let it manifest in the flesh, in the street, at work, in the car, in the van, in another state, 
in another county, in a store, in the bank, in the grocery store, wherever we set our feet, let it happen. In Jesus Christ's name. And we will forever give you the glory and the praise and the honor. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Go in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and shalom.